How's it going, Gray Boys? It is week five. We will get the chance to face off against Miami of Ohio. We started the season 0 and 3, and we also haven't started well. 1 and 2. We beat Michigan State, lost pretty badly Purdue, and then lost a game that we really shouldn't have lost against Ohio. So I think first things first, we need to make some changes. The team just isn't performing well. And I think that if we make a couple of uh, adjustments with maybe our depth chart, uh, things could turn around a little bit. At the running back spot, we have Stan Williams as our backup with Jerome Simmons in the third spot. And we know that Jerome actually did a solid amount for us last year. He's just a redshirt junior. So honestly, we would expect him to continue to perform. Uh, and Stan Williams, I don't know. I, I just haven't been super impressed with the way that he's played for us recently. So for now, we're going to swap these two guys around and let Jerome attempt to get a few more reps in. And in our kick and punt return, Stan needs to come out. He is not quick enough. 89 speed, 87 acceleration. We're definitely going to change that up. I'm just not sure what. Sean Mitchell is faster, but with less acceleration. Durham Finch is incredibly fast but I don't think we want our starting running back. Uh, so we're going to go to the defensive side and throw Corey Poole, the corner in as our kick and punt returner. He was the backup to Stan. Uh, so we just flip that around and hope that that works out a little bit better for us. Now, additionally, we are going to sub out our uh, running backs more frequently. I want to see more different guys getting carries. So we're going to bump both of the sub out and sub in thresholds up a little bit higher. This will allow us to see our different backs more frequently, but it also should allow uh, Finch Jr. to get some more playing time later in the game. So we've made a couple of changes there. We'll continue to make them if things don't go well for us, because we got to find something that will work. Uh, we got to start winning some games. And we also got to hope that we can bring in some good recruits to make these problems easier for next year. Believe it or not, we have a great opportunity to pick up a lot of recruits. Uh, we're gaining with all these really highly rated players. Uh, I think we can set up visits for most of them this week as well. We won't be offering them scholarships just yet. Uh, I, again, I want to try and get to that point where we are in the lead with them so that we have a chance at that insta commit we have our one level into it so the five percent chance i think is worth it especially uh the amount of points it could save us in the long run uh i did see ken archie we're losing 20 a week and we're 2000 behind wisconsin so we're just not getting enough bonus points there so he's gonna have to unfortunately come off the board we have three players to scout still. Hopefully they're good. Tony Landry, 68 overall defense event, stays there. Lorenzo Pope and Jason Bell both at 62 overall, and I'm hoping they go up. Lorenzo goes up to a 63, and Jason Bell stays at a 62. Uh, we're going to take the defensive tackle off the board, but we'll keep Pope around for now. We have 10 visits that we can schedule, including a bunch of big ones. Uh, with important players so unfortunately we can't go super late we don't have a lot of uh, late home games available to schedule these guys but we can schedule them against western michigan we get that little rival bonus which is nice with craig mccauley uh i'm tempted do we go super late or do we try to stack the western michigan game i think we will send him to the niu one and if it's possible we'll go niu otherwise they'll be going uh to that western michigan game even if we could potentially go later but uh, we'll set all this up and then we'll give the rest of our points away we can give a scholarship offer to lorenzo P pope corner doesn't insta commit which is a bit of a shame but it's not the end of the world and then we can just continue to give out points to really good players in the hopes that we could pick them up so Derek bentley will get some uh and i wish i could give george smith some points but unfortunately that's all that we have for this week in our top 25. Uh, we do have some ranked matchups coming. Hopefully uh, we see some chaos. Georgia just slaughtered Ole Miss. They would play Mizzou this week, but Michigan will play a number 10 Purdue and USC will play a number 17 Oregon. Both of those are road games 
for the important ones. Oregon coming off of an overtime loss against Penn State, so they'll be looking to bounce back. Do we have anything else lower down here? Number 19, Alabama will play at number 24, Ole Miss. Uh, and that seems to be it. A lot of losses here on the lower scale of things. Coastal able to bounce back with a 20-point win against UTEP. They get back to 500 on the season, and they play Charlotte this week. So let's get this one underway. Uh, we are the worst team overall-wise. Statistically, they're looking pretty good. Who have they lost to, though? 0-3 is we're favored to win. They lost to an FCS team. Okay, that's not good. And then they almost beat Michigan. They lose by six there and then almost beat a 3-0 Cincinnati. They lose that one by a field goal in overtime. So this team has some fight. Three losses, but all three of them pretty close games. They're a 75 overall team with a 77 offense and a 76 defense. Uh, what are our alternate home uniforms? That's, uh, yeah, we'll go with that. Silver helmet with the green jersey and pants for the Red Hawks. We'll go with their alternate too. Throw a little bit more color onto the field and hope that we can get this one put away quickly. So here we are back at the factory, Rynearson Stadium on what looks like a beautiful early fall afternoon. Ready for some football, Miami. Goes with tails, and the toss lands as a tail, so they're going to elect to kick this one off. We can return this first kick, and we'll see what Poole can do. Uh, replacing Stan Williams. Kind of muffed it, but picked it up quickly, and that was close to being a good return, but instead we're out at about the 20-yard line. One in five is the record of these two teams combined, so... Hopefully, we're the one that can double our win count today as Durham Finch Jr. goes for six yards on the opening play for the offense. The goal in this one definitely is to run the ball as much as possible. I don't like that they're showing pressure with one of the safeties, but we're going to hand it off anyways, and that'll be enough to give us a first down. Now, once again, one of the biggest things that we want in this game is just a nice dominating victory. It's not going to be easy to come by, but if we can stay away from turnovers, we should be in a good spot for that. We lose a yard on that first down, and now it's time for us to bring out the play. It's been working pretty well for us. The triple option. Finch Jr. is our pitch man. We'll try to wait. We get the pitch off. A super dangerous play by me, right? As I say, we need to avoid turnovers, but we're able to get it to Durham. And he gets us into a third and manageable. And you know what? We are trying to avoid passing the ball. Albert just does not have a good enough arm. So a run up the middle. And, or up the middle. And Jerome Simmons comes in for his first carry of the day. And he converts for us. I'm glad to see Jerome getting back into the swing of things. Getting a few more carries. I think he deserves it after his performance from last year. As Finch just kind of making some cuts. And he's picking up a lot of yards pretty early in this game. Second and two as we have crossed midfield, and we're going to try the first pass of this game. A little play action as we will look. And over the middle of the field, there's Curtis wide open. So maybe enough there to back the defense off and allow us to continue to just run the ball down their throats. That one gives us a first down to the 36-yard line. So the offense uh, firing on all cylinders so far in this drive. Simmons, another carry this time, just gets a yard. We'll just keep running the football, trying to hope for the best. Uh, we're definitely not in field goal range yet, but we might be getting there. Finch, five yards, gives us a third and five to work with. And then the interest here of making sure that we hold on to the football. We're going to keep it simple. We're going with the slip screen. Seeing if we can just pick it up through the air. Decent amount of space, but the blocking just doesn't hold. We actually lose four yards. That might have taken us out of field goal range. It would be a 53-yard field goal from here, so we're going to go for it on fourth down. B is open. Mitchell, an accurate pass from Albert there, and he's got 14 yards, and the drive will stay alive. Certainly wasn't feeling confident with that, but Albert completes his third pass of the game on just three attempts, and it seems like maybe that's the play. Just minimize the amount of damage he could do and then give him easy opportunities to build his confidence. Of course, those first downs really aren't working when we are losing yards. Looks like they want to bring pressure here, and it's tempting to audible. 
into a pass in that situation, but again, trying to minimize the amount of damage that Albert could do. We go read option, it works for seven yards. This is a pretty vanilla offense that we're running today, but first drive of the game, we got to make sure that we come out firing and the three yard third down isn't going to work. Fourth and one. I think I got to go for this. Uh, we've burned almost the entire first quarter on this drive. We can't come away with just three points. So handing it off to Durham Finch Jr. Up the middle on fourth and one. And he's going to be able to convert. That's a first and goal inside the five on the eight yard pickup. All right. Once again, we got to maybe in a spot where this play action could work really well. The tight ends looking for them. B is open and Albert Johnson coming out, throwing a hundred percent on the day. Four of four on the opening drive, including a touchdown. And just like that, uh, Five minutes and 54 seconds in the books, and we are up 7 nothing. If that's how all of our drives go, this is going to be an incredibly short episode. Uh, hopefully, we can just slow them down and, and make it that. Because if we could win easily, I would take that. The kick return takes us to the end of the first quarter. So at the end of one, only our offense has touched the ball, and we come out with the lead. Uh, we just got to hope that the defense can do a decent job slowing these guys down and continue to work for the rest of the half. My assumption here with Miami is that an 0-3 team probably isn't going to be great at passing the football, which means we're going to be bringing pressure early and often, although on first down, it does not work. It does, certainly doesn't pay off. Poole, the fastest man on the team, has to track down J.J. Matthews after he gets 23 on his first carry. It would be uh, such a classic move here if Miami scores in like three plays and for us, oh no, I left a man wide open. Thank goodness. Somehow we get the sack there on Brian Reed. I totally bit on that play action. I was going after the running back and he ran right past me. So lucky that it is second and 13. They'll step back to throw. Leaving the running back in the flat. We get a big shot on him and we can force this third and seven. We'll see what we can do. Just come out and hope for the best. Game a little bit laggy here as they're going with the slip screen. Poole should be able to get the tackle. He does hold on for a loss of two. So the defense holds there on their first drive. Surprisingly, we haven't seen an incompletion on the day as Brian Reed goes two for two. But he doesn't do quite enough. No fake punt for the Red Hawks. This punt's just going to land in the end zone. We'll take the touchback. And hopefully we have enough time to get another drive in. Just based off of the info from that opening one, we would run out of time before getting into the end zone here, but 4.30 left in the half. We'll hope for the best. A run for Finch Jr. up the middle is good for five. And for those of you already subscribed, I thank you. Uh, if you're not subscribed and you have seen, you know, multiple of these videos, if they're popping up in your feed, please feel free to hit the subscribe button right now. And as a payment, uh, I'll get sacked for a loss of nine. My brain legitimately turned to mush on that play, and I just could not think of what I was supposed to be doing. So now we're stuck with this uh, third and 13, where we'll see if we can convert. It's not going to be easy. A tough throw to Curtis, and it was... <laughs> About a mile off. Albert Johnson a little bit rattled up after the sack. We're going to go three and out. And we will just have to punt this one away and hope for the best. Hope they don't get too good of a return. Holt looking to gun down on Ford. And he doesn't get it. A couple of good blocks. And well, Miami's going to be starting in our field or our territory. Not really sure how to use words apparently today either. Uh, first and 10, we're bringing the blitz. We'll see if we can slow these guys down. I'm expecting a run. Man goes in motion. They will hand it off on the little jet sweep. Graham's there to get the stop, holding them to just two yards. We'll take that. And almost certainly, I'm going to expect a pass on second and eight. Hopefully, I don't get bamboozled by another play action. Uh, or they can just hand it off up the middle. Thankfully, Poole, the speedster, gets there in time to force the third down. And we're going to bring the pressure again. Got to try and stop him here. Critical spot. They're going to hand it off out towards the edge. Fox on the blitz is there in the backfield for a loss of two. And it could be a three and out if they don't decide to go for this. Well, it's the field goal formation for Miami. So we've sent out the punt return team to try and take this maybe to the house. No rules on me returning punts. This one is going to be fielded by Poole at the back of the end zone. 
Not sure how the blocking is going to look or if he has the speed, but he has almost the corner still on his feet, struggling. Oh my goodness. He was so close to just squeaking through there and taking it to the, or to the house, but I think it was always worth the effort there. We might now have worse field position by about 10 or so yards than we would have had we just let that hit the turf, but that's not what we're about here. Got to try to make big plays when we can. Durham Finch Jr. is going to be wide open. And that gets us to that field position with two minutes left in the half. I'm not super happy with the prospect of having to throw the ball a lot on this drive, but we'll see what Albert can do. Play action on this first down, trying to be patient. And uh, we just take a hit. Maybe had a guy open, but it's incomplete. And we will try a little counter on this one. Actually, no, if they want to bring pressure, we'll send Mitchell deep and see if maybe he can burn his man. Gotta hope for the best here. Gotta get this pass off soon. The pressure is coming, and oh my gosh. I had literally no time. Durham Finch was wide open out in the flat on that wheel route, but we couldn't get it there. We get sacked. It's third and a mile. Thought I would have at least another two seconds to work with on that play, but it's not the case. Third and 21. Stepping back to throw the pressure coming again. This time getting it off. Curtis has the catch. He's not going to have the space to be able to pick up the first down, but fourth and four. And I think we're going to go for it. Two and two on our fourth down conversion so far. We're going to step back to throw. Try to get the pass off. Eh, I don't really know what route our X receiver was running there. Not what I expected. I thought it was just going to be a corner. But we can't even get the pass off anyways. So it's a turnover on downs. Our offensive line at times today has just been Swiss cheese. A little bit disappointing. Uh, but sometimes that's just what we have to deal with as we get the sack on Reed for a loss of five. And Miami takes their first time out, so these guys want to tie this one up before the half. We'll see what I can do to try and make that a reality. Second and 15, they step back to throw. My guys open. Quarterback has guys all over the place. Finding some space, and that's enough for a first down. 29 seconds left. Miami has taken their second timeout now. Again, we can expect this one to go to the air. We'll see what we can do about it. Quarterback scrambling. He's got a lot of space to work with, trying to strip the ball. We get the good tackle. They're going to have to go in the hurry up now. And honestly, I'm not too worried about them taking a shot deep, so we're going to go with a linebacker over the middle just to try and defend some sort of short throw. They're letting the clock run out. 12 seconds now, waiting we baited them into that throw, but we couldn't get the tackle. This could be big inside the 10. There's the tackle. Six seconds left, and Miami is going to have to maybe spike the ball. They're definitely in danger here. They're going to try to run a play as the clock will expire on the half. Your quarterback scrambling. He fumbles the ball. Jackson has picked it up. He's not going to have the speed to take this to the house. Oh, he was so close to missing that tackle. You never know what could have happened. We do get the turnover, although it's a little bit inconsequential, unfortunately. And that will lead us into the halftime break up 7 to nothing. Uh, You know, not the blowout I was hoping for, but the defense has played really, really well so far in this game. Offense, you know, a little bit hit or miss. Maybe the offensive line could give us more time to pass and we could be up by more than a touchdown. But we'll take what we can get. Uh, if you're enjoying the video right now, please... Scroll down or whatever your device is on. Get to that like button and hit it if you wouldn't mind. It helps out the channel tremendously. And we'll uh, see what the offense can do in the third quarter. See if the defense can continue to be pretty effective. Would love to keep the shutout going, that's for sure. This one, a decent kick. We get it at least to the goal line. We'll see. Oh, gosh. Walters just got obliterated. And we give up a decent return. I'm aware that Miami only had a couple of drives, so not a lot of time of possession, but we only gave up 68 yards in the first half as they will try to run this one, and Eric Lane gets the nice tackle. You're just giving up a yard. For the most part, our run defense has been pretty solid, uh, not allowing them to pick up crazy big plays. This one's going to be another handoff. We read it perfectly. I just missed the tackle. Lane can't get it, and they're almost able to pick up the first down. That one should have been, at most, a gain of a yard or two, and instead it's third and inches, so we'll try to stop it. Try to get the jump with Fox. I missed the quarterback. He breaks a tackle. Oh, that's frustrating. 
That is real frustrating to get the first down. That makes it uh, twice that we should have had them stopped on that drive. And we give it up. So instead, they can hand it off. Finally, a good tackle. That one only gives up three yards. I would love to be able to keep them on this side of the 50. We'll see if we can even make that a reality. Second and seven, they step back looking to throw. I left the running back wide open and... Oh, Blair should have been there for the interception. Instead, it's Mike Tillman somehow getting to the ball. So it's first and 10, and well, just like that, they do manage to get across midfield. This one, a handoff up the middle. Fox and the defensive end are there to get the stop. But I just got to wonder, you know, if we're doing enough to stop them on this drive. A pretty uh, steady stream of yards coming right now for these guys. This looks like a good run interesting cuts we're gonna be lucky that they don't call us for a face mask there as they pick up the first down they're at the 36 yard line uh they should be at like the 20 though so i assume that they're in field goal range i'm gonna use her carter on this one try to push them out of it we get pressure on the quarterback but he throws it away early he's got a man to check it down to for five yards kind of feeling like the shutout is at risk now would love to create a turnover, although I don't expect it. This one, oh my gosh, Poole getting burned there. And they're inside the red zone. Those curls are doing damage right now. One thing is certain, this game really is flying by. This, the opening drive of the second half, and we're already halfway through the third quarter. As there's a big sack, Brian Reed gets just blindsided and loses five. As big as that sack was, honestly, I think that it's a bad thing for us. He was going to throw that into coverage. We definitely would have had a chance at the interception, but they'll live to fight again. This one a toss out towards the edge. Should be a tackle for loss. Well, we give up three yards, but it is still third and 12. Well, at this point, it's not like we, we shut them out on the game. Holding them to just three points would be really nice. Curl route available. We're able to get there in time, and it is fourth and three, so I think we'll see the field goal team. And I'm curious if somehow we could manage to block this. I very much doubt it, but you just never know. And there's a chance that they could miss it, although that's also highly unlikely. That was a pure kick right down the middle. So the Red Hawks finally get on the board with a minute and 50 left in the third quarter. It's now seven to three. Good thing about a game like this is that when they don't score a whole lot, there's not a whole lot of kicks to be returned, which means, well, I get a chance to actually take them back. Poole makes a nice move. That gives us decent field position out across the 30. Okay, so the offense comes out onto the field, and the one thing we certainly don't have to worry about, likely for the rest of this game, is the clock situation, so we can hand the ball off and not even think twice about it. Finch picks up seven on the first play of the drive. Sets us up with a second and three, and we'll go right back at him up the middle, trying to avoid that linebacker. A beautiful blitz. We'll lose two, and it'll be third and five. I got to be honest. I've called a dive here. We are just one of five on third downs. I'm not certain that this is going to work. It looks like they want to bring pressure. We're going to audible out of this. We'll go to oh i don't know what i've picked and we're running out of time so i guess we're gonna run uh dive out of the pistol on third and five well that worked tremendously we get the first down <laughs> was hoping to audible to uh pass there and throw a curl to our receivers the coverage has been backed off quite a bit but i guess we'll just take that anything that works that well is good with me this one <laughs> i threw that to curtis and we missed him by about 10 yards there. So while Albert might have started the game passing really well, it has gone downhill in a hurry as it has progressed. Jerome Simmons coming in. We'll try to hand it off to him. And the blitz again working phenomenally for Miami. We're just going to get back to the line of scrimmage. Third and 10. And I think we're going to try to get this play off the final play of the third quarter. See what we can do. No, we can't get it off in time. Had to make a quick hot route adjustment. Uh, you know, I guess it's not the end of the world. Up four points as we head into the fourth quarter. Neither team really finding success on offense. If we can score a touchdown or maybe even get a field goal, it might be enough to put this game out of reach for the Red Hawks. Unless we get most of the way there, I don't think this is four down territory. 
for us just yet. Uh, play art for Morris looks a little bit concerning. We'll see. Is he just going to run straight backwards? Uh, okay. Well, I think that might be a play that I accidentally broke using the uh, playbook creator. Regardless, we had a man wide open, and he just dropped the football. So we're going to try to punt this one away and hope we can kind of cough and corner them. As long as we don't give them the touchback, I'm going to be happy with it. That one being fair caught at about the 16-yard line. Just uh, frustrating. When Albert finally makes an accurate throw, the receivers drop it. All right. Well, first and 10. A long ways to go for Miami. Can we slow them down again? We've been doing a pretty good job. There's one broken tackle and five yards allowed. Our man coverage has been pretty solid so far today, so... I don't mind sticking with it. Not sure if we have the personnel for a good zone. Walters, a good tackle there. Holds him to just a yard and quickly third and four. If we could manage to just force a three and out here, that would be huge. Huge, huge, huge. They're going with the toss play. Nobody going to be able to get there in time. Walters coming all the way across the field. But it's not enough and they convert. The drive will continue for now. First and ten. Still inside the 30. We're going to try to bring some pressure. Just see if we can really slow these guys down. Quarterback stepping back to throw and has to throw it away. I think he had a guy coming open over the middle, but we will absolutely take that. And believe it or not, that was actually the first incompletion for this quarterback. Eight of nine now on the day. We're trying to bring the zone blitz, and it does end up working out. It's just a yard gain. So third and nine now for the Red Hawks. We'll come out in this cover six and see if we can slow these guys down. Just have to give up eight yards or fewer. And I expect them to punt the ball away. They go with the screen. We have plenty of guys in position. We get the stop. I thought they were going to get more than two yards, but the defense held strong there. So it'll be the punt team out. Four minutes in the game. Uh, probably not a good idea for Miami to go for it. But you got to wonder, you know, their defense really has to come up big here if they want to slow down our offense, which has been just killing the clock. Pool with a good return puts us across midfield and the special teams today after making the big changeup has definitely been much better. If you are a fan of offense, this game has been a snooze fest, but the defense has kept both teams in this one. Jerome Simmons comes in first carry of the drive goes for five. And this might be the dumbest move that we do all day, but I'm going to step back and look to throw the ball. We'll see if we have time. They're bringing pressure, so we get rid of it early. Wilson with the good catch, although the ball was behind him. That gives us a third and three. Should have been a first down, but we'll take it. We're going to go play action on this one. I don't know if we've run back-to-back -back plays in this situation. There's more as he holds on to it. Good throw that time. Is <laughs> What the heck is going on with that graphic? That's hilarious. Well, I'm not entirely sure <laughs> what the graphic was trying to convey, but I, I have to agree with it because obviously it worked out pretty well for us. Jerome on the counter gets six yards and the clock is starting to get dangerously low for Miami. At this point, a touchdown for us certainly would be the dagger as with two minutes and 20 seconds left. I'm not sure a team that hasn't been able to get into the end zone all day if they're going to be able to score any points. On the read option, we pick up the first down. They take their first time out, and that's how you know it's crunch time. Uh, Jerome, oh, so close to breaking off a big one. Offensive lineman just couldn't quite get the right block. They take their second time out. And a first down, I think, at this point would certainly win it. Trying to give it to Jerome on the sweep. The blocking isn't there. He's just going to get a yard. It's third and eight as they take their final timeout. And being in field goal range here, I can't risk losing this in regulation. So we're just going to hand the ball off on the counter. If Jerome can pick it up, that would be fantastic. He's so close. Fourth and inches. Oh, this puts me in a really, really tough spot. I think I know what we're going to do. Expecting it to kick the field goal here. We'll see if we can draw them offside. But instead, it's just going to be a false start, and we'll kick the field goal anyways. If we could have gotten the free first down, that would have been it for Miami. Instead, 
We'll have to go back and make this kick. We put it right down the middle. So 10 to three, it's a touchdown lead with a minute and 40 left. Miami with no timeouts remaining. See what Jones can do as we expect a good kick. He's been putting them pretty deep today in that one. He'll be fielded at about the yard and a half. Mark Walters gunning down pretty well. There's a missed tackle, but we kept him inside the 25. So that's pretty fantastic. Defense will come into this drive with four sacks and a forced fumble on the game. If we can put pressure on this quarterback, it might be enough to end it. They'll step back and throw the check down. This one's gonna be caught behind the line of scrimmage and Reggie Gilbert won't be able to get back. So it's lots of two. Just gonna keep the two safeties in at all times at this drive and they're gonna have to spike the ball to stop the clock, forcing an early third and 12. Can we get the stop? is the question putting a man over the middle pre to prevent a check down <laughs> oh the, okay the ai has lost their mind it's a halfback draw on third and 12. we get the stop and now with the game on the line and less than a minute remaining they're gonna have to go for it on fourth and 11. should we get the stop it's game over we just have to hope that the defense holds stepping back they're gonna hand it off again they're selling it's as simple as that even a slip screen has a higher chance of converting in that situation but the coach for miami apparently does not want to win this game so due to some questionable decision making the offense gets to come out in the victory formation and we can take another knee and just let the clock burn out on this game as we will thankfully get our second win of the season had we had fallen uh to one and three that would have been really rough miami now falls to zero and four is they're already staring down the barrel of not being able to go to a bowl game four weeks into the season that is pretty rough matt graham our player of the game two tackles for loss and two sacks as the defense really dominated giving up just a field goal uh i mean a complete game from the defense the offense had its struggles they did what they needed to do at the end of the day but against a better team i don't think that's going to be enough offensive line just didn't give albert time to throw albert made way too many inaccurate throws and then uh you know we had that big drop to a wide open receiver so still some kinks to be worked out but we walk out with the w and that's really all that matters at the end of the day I would go so far as to say that that's a pretty solid way to bounce back. Um, not the crushing victory that I would hope for, but we did a good job. I mean, look at the amount of offense in the entire game. We had 76 on the ground and 74 through the air. They had 68 on the ground and 79 through the air. So neither team really able to move the ball at all. Uh, the one time they really got close to the end zone was at the end of the half where we forced the fumble uh both teams really chewed up the clock and at the end of it it just becomes a, kind of a boring 10 to 3 game but for us it's thrilling because any victory is good uh offensive stats for richard brown don't show as he is the player of the game but i didn't really realize it in real time richard brown our left tackle is the man who caught the touchdown i believe so a big man touchdown uh is probably the most exciting thing that really happened all game matt graham uh, overall player of the game and defensive as well again with the two tackles for loss and the two sacks our running backs did a really solid job today but the offense in general just couldn't put enough together during the drives to get into the end zone more than that one opportunity so back even uh on the record i feel like i might have said that we were two and three but no two and two as miami Post falls to zero oh and four uh who do we have next week is it a bye no at akron for week six another game that we should be able to compete pretty well in but i got to imagine that the zips are a better team than the red hawks Ooh, there's some good news our offensive coordinator john arnold has leveled up so he's now level two more guys ready to uh visit although two guys commit uh indiana and central michigan picking them up decent amount of xp and akron is three and one that certainly makes me a little bit worried for once we are not favored to win akron is the higher overall team and they are better in every category statistically except for the rush defense and the defense rating 
Uh, not feeling great about that. Who is Akron Point? They beat an FCS team, lost by six to Troy, beat Toledo by 10, and then put the beat down in our rivals in Western Michigan. So they're looking to uh, complete a little trip there of the directional Michigan schools. We'll see if we can spoil their fun, however, and uh, maybe we can impress some recruits that way. Uh, let's go ahead and put this level up into our offensive coordinator. Should be pretty simple. We'll just continue with the up-tempo, trying to increase the injury rating and the, uh, the stamina abilities so that our best players stay in the game a little bit longer. And let's take a look at the top 25 to see what happened uh, around the country last week. If there was anything crazy, USC remains unbeaten still after beating a ranked Oregon. Uh, Penn State will have to play a number seven Purdue. So that's a pretty big game as Purdue just actually beat Michigan. So they handed the number two team in the country their first loss. That's a pretty big upset. Texas and Oklahoma will play. Clemson and Notre Dame are facing off uh, some big games there. Coastal does get a win against Charlotte and they desperately needed that because it felt like they were in a bit of a free fall to start the season. Minnesota just ranked 20 after starting the season 4-0. Uh, the Ducks down to that 500 record. And anybody dropping out of the votes? TCU, Alabama, and Navy all falling out. Certainly they're not happy about that, but uh, I don't know. All the chaos that we can see is good. As, as many teams uh, with you know two or more losses is certainly good news for us. Obviously, I have no expectations of us making the playoff this season. But the more chaos there is, the higher ranked we could go uh, and the better bowl game we could end up at. One thing that I'd like to do is take a look at player stats a little bit more as the season progresses. Uh, so this seems like a good opportunity to do that. Four games in, Albert Johnson with 101.6 QB rating, 49 of 92 for 523 yards. Five touchdowns to eight interceptions, throwing at 53%. The only guy to throw a pass on our team. In the rushing department, it's almost all Durham Finch Jr. 53 attempts for 312 yards and a touchdown for him with a long of 77, which is pretty impressive for this team. Jerome Simmons is second there with not a whole lot of carries. Nine carries for 32 yards. Puts him above Stan Williams with his 18 carries for 31 yards receiving it leaders wise uh mark morris has come out pretty surprisingly the true freshman out of union city tennessee at 69 overall of course 13 catches for 140 yards uh no touchdowns though those have come from john wilson his 11 catches for 63 yards has netted him two touchdowns brian curtis uh seven catches for 135 and a touchdown Zach Wilson, the other Wilson that's been big, five catches for 71 yards and a touchdown. And the only other touchdown is to Richard Brown, the left tackle. So it really was a big boy touchdown. The redshirt senior trying to go out his final year with a bang. One catch, five yards into the end zone. On defense, Chris Fox, the strong safety, leads the team in tackles for loss with nine, followed up by the outside linebacker, Graham. Uh, and both of them right there at the top for sacks, along with Clinton Whitfield, our defensive tackle. He's the guy that forced the fumble uh, last game. Frank Blair, two picks. Corey Poole, two picks. And then Chris Fox and Samuel Thomas each have one. How about forced fumbles? Is it just the one? No, we have three. Whitfield has one. So does Samuel Thomas, the free safety, and Russell Cannon, the defensive tackle. So all in all, a decent start to this season. We would love to be doing a little bit better, but we knew there were going to be losses. Honestly, I would not be upset if we finished this season at 500. So we're a decent way there already. We got out of our early season out of conference games, uh, one and one, and we've now started conference play one and one. So with as bad of a quarterback as we have, I don't think I could be too upset. Curious to know your guys' thoughts on this episode. Uh, if there was anything completely idiotic I did during the game, I don't think we made any terrible decisions this time around. It's a very vanilla game plan that we had going in, and we pretty much stuck to it. But if there's something, uh, you know, besides an open receiver that I missed that you would have done differently, I, I would love to know. Because sometimes it's nice to know what other people would do so I can think uh, and maybe change up my decision making in the games.
If you haven't already, please feel free to hit the like button on this video. Helps out tremendously. Subscribe if you enjoy the content and you want to see more as well. And then you can head down to the description where you'll find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. It's also a link to my Twitter, our community Discord, and the college football revamp mod if you're trying to get it for yourself. All that being said, though, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Grey Boys, wherever you are. Have a good night or have a good morning. We'll see you later. Adios.